Skilling is one of the more fundamentally important core mechanics of the gameplay of Dead by Daylight. It is perhaps the second most time-consuming task that survivors typically do, of course after their generator repairs, their main objective, and it looks a little bit like this. One survivor healing another takes about 16 seconds, and since this action requires both survivors to stand still in place, you could argue that it's actually wasting twice as long, so 32 seconds of effective time that they could have spent doing something else. This is about the same time that it takes a single person to self-care themselves to full health, so a single heal state takes about 32 seconds overall. If you add this up, let's say five times over the course of a match, that actually adds up to a lot of time, an extra two generators or so. That is a very, very long time that could potentially get even worse. If the survivors take a long time to coordinate a heal, if the killer is running healing slowdown perks, or if they get interrupted, some of this time could be completely wasted. For that reason, you'll sometimes see survivors bring extremely good perks to heal very, very quick, or to just completely abandon the idea of healing and just focus on objectives and not heal unless it's absolutely necessary. And given how risky and time-consuming healing can be, these strategies make perfect sense. But what if I told you that there is a way to combine the best of both? Enter the Resurgence and we'll make it build that me and my three friends all run for six matches just to test it out. With Resurgence, a freshly unhooked survivor has their healing progress already at 50%. And with we'll make it, the unhooking survivor basically heals twice as fast, which makes a 16 second heal now turn into a 4 second heal. Assuming that of course it's two people doing it, this leaves us with 8 seconds of wasted time, which is a massive improvement over the regular 32 seconds. Will make it also lingers for 90 seconds, which means that the unhooking survivor can use that buff on other survivors. And just in case the killer is camping or is nearby and tries to deny this heal, we also brought borrowed time with the final perk slot left for whatever perk that particular person wanted to bring. The idea behind this build is that we're not going to heal at all under normal circumstances. We will only heal after unhooking or if Will make it is active. And I don't want to clickbait you guys too much, <laughs> but the results of this were actually quite surprising. Let me share them with you. So first match with all four survivors trying out this build, we play against the Blight with the very typical meta strong perks as well as with very good add-ons. At one point, I go down after finishing a generator, get hooked, unhooked, healed in just four seconds and get right back to work, which is really, really strong. Perhaps because of the very difficult map, we do manage to finish all the generators without losing anyone, but by the end, we are in this very difficult situation where everyone is injured. But it doesn't matter, one of us has will make it lingering still and quickly heals up the other survivors. I get hooked a second time and while the killer is slightly distracted, two teammates heal me in just a couple seconds and this gives me an easy way out and a free escape. And this pattern kind of continues in the second match where we play against a set of twins. They don't do very well at the start. When they finally do catch a survivor, they play very defensive and proxy camp of sorts with Victor. Eventually, we do all the gens. And even though at this point, Resurgence and Will Make It have really done nothing, they really come in clutch near the end. With a single use of Will Make It, my friend Leonek, who's playing Ash, heals me, then heals someone else, then heals a third person. And even though the killer did their best to drag us far away from the exit gates, the fact that we could heal so quickly after unhooking really worked out. Eventually, we all escaped. In our third match against a Demogorgon this time, we see a similar trend. We do pretty well throughout the match and we don't really need it or use it much, but then Resurgence and we'll make it actually come in clutch near the end, where we can heal each other quickly and go for the rescue. And if we hadn't miscommunicated where one of the exit gates was, I think we could have gotten a 4 man escape here. And in our next match, we see the exact same thing unfold. Throughout the match, it gives us little value, but then at the end, when we actually need to body block for each other and be healthy to go for rescues, when the killer is trying to secure their final kill, these perks come in really, really handy. We do a bunch of body blocking, and eventually we're all out. In our following game, we went up against a very decent cannibal who played really well, but unfortunately was forced to drop chase several times because the map he was playing in was kind of tough. Uh, this killer, more than some of the previous ones, countered our builds pretty well. He has an insta down, infectious fry, and so on. Uh, but still, even still, near the end of the game, Will Make It Under Resurgence really came in clutch. 
After doing a risky save and rescuing my friend Nizachu, who's playing Feng Min, she was full health. This forced the killer to eventually try to use his Chenso on her. He failed, bumped into a tree, and this is how we all made it out. And then we get to our final match where we played against an insanely, disgustingly good Huntress. And I know she's good because she immediately landed this shot on me at the start of the match. Luckily, I could run her for enough time to do some generators early. And the fact that we just played somewhat okay and got some quick heals here and there allowed us to very barely make it to the end of the game. We did get a little bit greedy and try to get a four man out. The killer seemed to recognize this and she played super super nice and let us all escape. But in return we all died to her except our friend Leonek who is a traitor. But happy ending aside, throughout this match it was actually really really hard to make use of this build. This is one of the more open maps in the game and this Huntress was super deadly at hitting us from a distance and denying heals. Even if we got behind trees it was just completely impossible. And this is a bit of the trend. Uh, obviously with Hunters in this map it's very easy but some other killers do this. They don't let you heal after the unhook. And this build can fail a little bit in these situations if the killer is just a little bit too attached to the person they hooked. So with all of that in mind, what are my overall conclusions? Overall, Resurgence and Will Make It are decent perks by themselves that work quite well together. If I had to say which one spoon most of the weight, I would say that Will Make It is the real king since it allows you to heal multiple survivors really quick. And Resurgence can always backfire if the killer is camping or tunneling a little bit but they work well together. They could replace some of your perks if you're looking to spice up your builds. They work particularly well at the end of the game as you've seen. And of course, since it requires a bit of coordination, taking hits for each other and so on, these are perks that you want to bring with teammates that you're on comms with. I would not bring this build for much of my solo queue games, mind you. While in some of the other matches, I reckon that some of the other meta popular perks would have been even more helpful. I still think that these perks are decent and fun when you're playing with your friends, so I would rate them as pretty good and recommend that you at least try it out sometime. Thank you so much for watching, I hope it was entertaining, and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.